Hey, what's up guys? Sam here. Welcome back to another video. Today we've got details about the new iMac. Some fresh stuff that makes sense to me, but that doesn't make me happy really at all. And Face ID may be coming to future Macs in addition to the iPhone 12 first visual confirmation that it's probably not going to have a big notch. In fact, that notch has gone on the keto diet. It has lost a few pounds and it is back to kick some other notches out of here. All right, so if you guys are excited for the video, drop a like down below to seriously help me and the channel out and hit subscribe for more. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, I think it's uh, it's only right, it's only what's correct to start with the news about the iPhone 12 because this is probably the device that most of us are most interested in. So you know how there's supposed to be a 5.4 inch model, two 6.1 inch models, and then a higher end 6.7 inch Pro Max model? Well, we finally have concrete evidence that Apple is actually working on a 5.4 inch model. I mean, we knew that peripherally, but 9to5Mac discovered that in the latest iOS 14 beta 3, they were able to get the interface to basically scale down to the perfect size of what would be a 5.4 inch model. And while it doesn't look that different, it's kind of cool to see iOS simulated on this dummy unit phone that I've got in my hand right now. The resolution on here is kind of a weird one. It's 960 across and then 2079 up. So the weirdest resolution I feel like we've ever seen on an iPhone, but as you can tell by all these screenshots, it's obviously iOS is normal. And we also have some further evidence that Apple is working on a smaller iPhone because they added display zoom to the iPhone 10, 10s, and even 11 Pro, you know, the 5.8 inch iPhone, which suggests that that scale is gonna be zoomed down on the 5.4 inch iPhone. Now, if you really sit down and think about the smaller screen size, you're gonna go, well, wait a second, wouldn't there have to be a smaller notch because the notch that we currently know from the iPhone 10 to the iPhone 11 Pro series it's probably gonna to be too big to fit on a smaller 5.4 inch iPhone. And you'd be exactly correct, you win the grand prize because Apple is shrinking the notch this year. And finally, we have some concrete evidence that this is happening. And it essentially is like a little bit of a redesigned version of the notch we have now. I mean, we saw renders, mockups of what it could look like, but now some actual display panels have leaked, which is not something that we, we actually ever see that often. These images first appeared on Weibo, but then were quickly taken down, not sure by the poster, or maybe somebody was like, hey, you know, maybe Apple was like, you should probably take these images down, we don't really like that. Luckily, somebody on Twitter was able to obtain these and post about them, and when you look at the notch, it really is different looking than before. Like, it's not literally just smaller, it's actually a bit shorter and slimmer. And I was like, of course, well, how does this compare to the existing notch? And Mac Rumors did some awesome detective comparison work here, scaling a couple of pictures together of the existing notch and then using like this new one, retrofitting it uh, basically in Photoshop and drawing some lines to see how much bigger it is. And you can see the difference is very clear. So by shifting the speaker grill up and then pushing everything together, Apple's able to make a notch that is a little bit smaller. Now, personally, I thought it would be a little bit more significant than this. Like you look on the OnePlus 6T, so many other phones, they have like a more teardrop shape, something more subtle, very, very small notch. This clearly is still a notch, but it is going to be a lot smaller and it should match like some slimmer bezels around the edges because that's also what these images seem to indicate is that the bezels are certainly shrinking. What's absolutely blowing my mind though is that we still don't have a final design look at these iPhones. Like generally we've seen that by now, but this year because of the virus, apparently everything got pushed back. That's where we're hearing, you know, announcement in September, but probably not shipments on these phones until October or November. I mean, we saw delays with the iPhone uh, 10R in 2018. We saw it in 2017 with the iPhone 10. Generally, when Apple has a lot of big changes for a model, uh, they have a hard time getting it down in a year. I'm not saying they, they have to. I'm just saying that's that's facts. I'm spitting facts at you. So combine a whole radical new squared off design this year and a pandemic, yeah, I think these phones are gonna be coming a little bit later than expected, but I think they're certainly still coming in 2020. We saw a rumor a while back that somebody said that the phones weren't even gonna ship in 2020. I think that's ridiculous. That's, uh, that's too much money Apple's losing out on there to let that happen. So don't expect the iPhone 12 to come out anytime in like the immediate future because Apple's actually got some other stuff in the works. You might remember a video I made last week talking about new Apple products being on the way. Our boy, love to dream, dreaming up some exciting stuff that new Apple products are actually ready to ship, which makes sense. This is amid rumors of an iMac refresh, maybe AirTags, AirPod Studio. Uh, some other mini products like a portable HomePod that Apple's been working on. All summer long, we haven't seen any hardware. In fact, the last Apple hardware release 
was the refresh of the 13 inch MacBook Pro in May. So we're looking on the horizon every day, you know, when are the Apple products coming? Who's gonna tell us when they're coming? How can I buy these new Apple products? And the answer is that they are coming soon. Well, at least one of them is coming very soon. The new iMac is coming in August, according to our pal, John Prosser, which means the dude is pretty accurate. We're talking three out of every four things and a little bit higher than that do end up happening. And this tweet is double-sided though, because it gets you. You remember how we've heard about this redesigned iMac? I'm gonna show you the images. We're gonna weep together in a second, because while the new iMac is said to be coming in August, I would venture to say maybe the first half of that month, it's not the iMac we were expecting. That iMac is probably coming, I don't know, later on down the road. But the redesigned iMac with thin bezels, you know, 30 inch plus, it's not, it's not this one. This is literally not going to look different, all right? It's, it looks and it feels like apparently it's probably gonna end up being a spec upgrade. And at first while well, I was like, there is no way, all the rumors have said this. I mean, if you really think about what Apple's doing in the near future, introducing Apple Silicon, I think you could start to maybe piece some stuff together. Min Shiko has said that when Apple introduces Apple Silicon, that the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros are gonna be seeing some significant design upgrades. So would it make sense for Apple to design a redesigned iMac around an Intel chip when they just have ARM coming out? Again, this is just speculation. I don't know, but based on what John Prosser is saying, and he's the only person recently that has said anything about the iMac specifically, that if Apple is just gonna do an Intel refresh with the same design, that could definitely build a lot higher anticipation up for the Apple Silicon introduction. And quite frankly, it wouldn't make that much sense to redesign the iMac for Intel and then have to redesign the thermals and everything on the inside when Apple switches to Apple Silicon. So this refresh that we're talking about, Apple has confirmed Intel refreshes are still happening in the pipeline this year. It, it is probably, to our dismay, a subtly different version than the iMacs we have right now. So staying the same 21.5 and 27 inches, same bezels, same look, same screen, same design, just different internals of some kind. And really moving forward, I think Apple Silicon is gonna remove pretty much any limits of what the Mac has had before. And this comes straight from an exclusive from nine to five Mac. There's new references in the latest Mac OS Big Sur beta to Face ID coming to the Mac, which for me has just always made infinite more sense than Touch ID. On the iMac, on the MacBook, when you're sitting farther away from your screen, it's never made sense to have a Touch ID sensor. And in fact, to this day, there is no Touch ID on the iMac or the Mac Pro. It's just not there. So you have to like type in your password manually. It feels very incontinuitous. Is that a word? Just inconsistent with the rest of Apple's products. So with Face ID coming, you're gonna be able to have this great experience where you can actually sit back and look at your computer like I'm looking you guys in the eye right now and have it say facial scan authorized. And then you get right into your MacBook or your iMac and it's especially gonna solve the problem on Apple's desktops where there isn't even a, a secure authentication option other than a password right now. When is this gonna come though? Nine to five Mac doesn't know and I mean, I don't, I don't know either. I don't even really have a guess. I would say at some point within the next year just because that seems pretty logical, seems pretty reasonable to me, but perhaps Apple would surprise us before the end of this year by putting Face ID on something like a new MacBook Pro or MacBook Air that is also supposed to be coming with the Apple ARM chips. And 95 Mac believes it is gonna happen with the silicon transition because Apple is gonna be able to introduce the secure enclave or secure element that is usually used in conjunction with the existing iOS A-series chips that we have now. That's all that's been cooking up in the past couple of days. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like down below, hit subscribe for more. You're the best. I love you. I'll catch all of you in my next video.